An anthology about the bad, the short-lived, and the forgotten shows and events in television history. This is It Was a Thing on TV. Before I change my mind! I give you Super Train! Oh, Episode 361, submission number 2351, Small Fortune. Small Fortune aired on the NBC television network from May 31st to July 19th, 2021, for six episodes. That would be ten less episodes than the Hudson Brothers Razzle Dazzle Show and Uncle Crock's Block. And this is the third thing that we've covered from 2021 in the episode canon. The other two would be Dad Stop Embarrassing Me and the Tic Tac Toe Tom Bergeron Pilot. Prepare for an epic journey around the world. As competitors face the toughest challenges of their lives, teams push to their absolute limits. Oh. In the teeniest, tiniest games ever seen on TV. Tiny games, but they tough. With over a quarter million dollars on the line. They'll play five mini games. The pressure's on you! But they'll only walk away with the cash. Diana. If they can steal it. Oh. In our final game, The Big Little Heist. Let's open that bank! Yes. Sit back. Let's play ball! This ain't your grandma's game show. Or is it? Small fortune. It's my first season on the show. I can't have a heart attack yet. <laughs> okay, if I were like a normal viewer and I knew nothing about this show, if I saw no promos and I saw that, I'd be like, what the f is this that I'm watching? <laughs> first off, did you see what it said on the scoreboard of the tiny baseball stadium? What did it say on the tiny stadium scoreboard? Okay. It's supposed to be modeled after Fenway Park. So if you've ever seen the manual left field scoreboard at the bottom, you know what it looks like. So instead of saying Fenway Park at the top, it said Fenway Park. <laughs> Hold up. That's not even the worst pun on this show. Obviously, we're going to talk about the games on this show, but the end game takes place in... Rells Fargo Bank. <laughs> so hold on. If they had a tiny model of the city of Philadelphia, would they have something called the Rells Fargo Center? <laughs> yeah, question two. Wouldn't it be appropriate for Don LaPre to promote this show? <laughs> it's tiny <laughs> ants! <laughs> if only Don hold on. If only Don were still with us. Because he would place advertisements in newspapers with tiny classified ads about the show. Finally, a game show that only Don LaPre could love. Because you're making big money with these tiny stunts. So yeah, for five glorious weeks in the summer of 2021, we, in the prime age of the game show in the new millennium we have this show but where did this show come from yeah chico where did this show come from it came from our good friends in england where dermot o'leary who is known for hosting many a television and radio program in fact he was the host of The X Factor from 2007 till its cancellation. And since 2021, Dermot has hosted ITV's This Morning on Fridays and school holidays and bank holidays alongside Allison Hammond, who... Oh! This is 
CNN Breaking News. Allison Hammond is the new host of the Great British Baking Show. Oh, that's fantastic. But yeah, Dermot O'Leary is the host of Small Fortune, where teams of three contestants are tasked with completing dexterity-intensive challenges taking place within miniature-scale models of real-world locations. And the nominated contestant is allowed only one attempt, with each completed challenge adding a maximum of £50,000 to a large prize jackpot. £50,000, five challenges, £250,000, if you do it right. Now, whoever wins the best of five challenges must play one more challenge to claim that jackpot. All the team members who complete their respective challenge are eligible to attempt that final challenge. But each contestant only receives one free go at it before being penalized for failure. And the penalty is a paltry 10%. So that show aired between February 2nd and March 9th of 2019, a month after the show went off the air in the UK, NBC ordered an American version from the same producers who produced the ITV version. And of course, because it's NBC, it would be co-produced by Universal Television Alternative. More than a year after the show was ordered, because it was a straight-to-series order, they tapped Lil Rel Howery, who you would know from his own show on Fox, which we will cover eventually, and being the uh, comic relief in the blockbuster horror film and feel-good movie of 2017, Get Out! You know, with uh, Allison Williams and that one guy. Everybody remembers Laurel Howery, but nobody remembers the lead. Oh, the guy who's the... Not the heel who was Michael B. Jordan, Black Panther. Not that guy. The other guy. That's what I said. Daniel yeah. Kaluuya, I think his name is, right? Daniel Kaluuya, yeah. Okay, that's how you pronounce it. Okay. Get Out was, of course, the big movie of 2017. I want to say Jordan Peele's first foray into experimental horror. Yeah. And from Get Out, you have Us. And then, um, hey, Chuck Tessa, I can't remember the third movie that Jordan Peele did. What was it called again? Nope. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. Nope. Good thing you told us. Yeah. Thank you, Chuck. And you know what? It was probably Kiki Palmer's best work. That obviously wasn't best work. No, if you ask me, Kiki Palmer's best work was Password. Well, that's Fight according me. to you. Fight me. But again, it languished in NBC development hell for the better part of two years where you get the crafting of the models and the building of the sets, and obviously casting the contestants. But on May 31st, it finally aired. And it didn't really get too much of an audience. But then again, this was the summer of 2021, so you wouldn't have that much of an audience to begin with, would you? Not really. Oh, well, again, the show... Didn't really change much. The format remains the same. The premise remained the same. The dollars remains the same. There was really not much you could do with the show this simple. So yeah, let's talk about it. The object of the show was to complete five tasks en route to a larger task. It's called... I can't believe I'm about to say this. The Big Bank Heist. You get one go at it for three minutes. 
where you could make a lot of money or lose a lot of money. And it aired for six episodes. Let's talk about those episodes, shall we? Okay. All right. Episode one. Semper Fly. Two former Marine buddies and the sister of one of them compete in a miniature puzzles based on the Oval Office, planting the U.S. flag on the moon and a supermarket setting before attempting to steal the money banked from, well, a bank. Duh. Yeah. Every teammate has to play at least one game before somebody can play again, and they each have one free chance to practice a game, but every success of practice will cost a fifth of the potential prize. And when they are ready to play a game, there's a red button that they have to press. The games featured in this episode. The Waste Wing. A paper must be flipped inside a trash can for $10,000. One small step. While wearing blackout goggles, a player has to stick an American flag in a red circle for $25,000. Wedding Clashers. A tablecloth must be pulled without anything falling off for $50,000. The fourth game, Clean Up on Cloud 9, and... Hold on! Clean Up on Cloud 9? Is this a crossover with Superstore? This is a crossover from Superstore. Yeah, Greg read my mind. I thought it was going to be a crossover with Superstore 2. What a shocker. You know what? You think they would watch that Cloud9 instructional video about unions? No union better mess with my family. Oh, MC Cool Cloud, you're going to be the best dad. Oh, whoa. Gross. I'm sorry. Did MC Cool Cloud just impregnate a human? I think he did. Okay, does anybody have any thoughts about the video? I mean, I'm a little disappointed. I thought you were showing us Paddington. Uh, no, I never... I also heard it was going to be Paddington. I don't know where these Paddington rumors got started. <laughs> the kicker is I remember that episode. Okay, so you have 30 seconds to grab eight mini soda cans on the floor with tweezers and stack them into two upright pyramids for $75,000. And the final game was Cart of Gold. Someone will have up to five attempts to drop three gold nuggets from a chute onto a last train car. Doing so after the free practice will put $1,000 in your bank. And to win all of the money banked, the players had to participate in the Big Little Heist. One player will use tweezers to find three colored key cards and insert them into the matching slots near the bank's doors to open the doors. Another will flick dynamite at three magnetic gold targets to blow open the vault. And the final player, using only one hand, will balance three cash stacks on a hanging platform. And by this time, the team has banked $170,000. If they succeed, they win the $170,000. However, if they fail, they only win a tenth of that, which is $17,000. They succeeded and won the $170,000. Episode 2, Grandma Knows Best. Playing in this episode are Sylvia, a grandmother... Jennifer, her daughter, and Alyssa, her granddaughter. The games include fashion tips, where you have to use two fingers to strut down a runway, stop to pose on the red line while wearing blindfolded goggles. The second game, Statue of Libertini. I could make a joke about the star of future entry Family Man, the Family Man, but Family Man. But Statue of Libertini, up to three chances are given to toss a ring on the statue's torch. Third episode, this game shucks. Aw, oh, shuck. 
Using a straw, you have to suck up five pieces of corn and put them in the silo within 10 seconds. Game four is We Wild West. You will have to use a flimsy pole to get a set of keys and place them in a bucket without dropping or knocking over anything. And the final game was A Little Tipsy. You have to balance four drinks on a tiny tray on the finger and serve them in a miniature bar. The team has banked $115,000, but they lose the big little heist and end up with $11,500. $11, Episode 3, Team USA. Now, we have in this episode, because this would be the summer of the delayed Tokyo Olympics, three American softball players, Lovey, Leah, and Amanda. Games include French Roll, Blow a Blue Ball Through the Arc de Triomphe. Second game, Totally Hammered. You have three chances to catapult a frog onto a lily pad using a hammer and a catapult. Third game is One Small Step. The fourth game is A Little Tipsy. And the fifth game is, oh god, The Small of America. Using one purse, you have to hook one piece of clothing and place it into the car's trunk. They failed the big little heist, so instead of the 125000 that they could have won, they end up with $12,500. Episode 4. For Better or Nurse. Rose is a nurse practitioner on a team with a registered nurse, Simeon, and a paramedic, Aaron. They want to raise money for Haiti disaster relief on this show. They play Pinky Power, a miniature barbell must be transferred from one weight bench to another while keeping it balanced. Small Fortune 500s, where you have to roll a marble around a racetrack, hopefully to stop within a red wind zone. A Merry Little Christmas. You have 20 seconds to use a crane to hook a Christmas tree, lift it off the truck, and plant it into the base on the stage. So I'm guessing they had this miniature uh, Rockefeller Center because that would make the most sense because, again, NBC. Yes. Cart of gold and fork it over. Transfer five shipping containers and stack them on a dock using, of course, a fork. They only made $60,000 going into the big little heist. They failed the big little heist and end up with $6,000. Episode 5, Bam Chowda. Triplets from Boston compete. They are Rick, Bobby, and Drew. Their games are pint-sized, a pint of beer, must be slid from one end of the bar to the other and stay in the wind zone. Hello, trolley. Take a trolley uphill without its ring touching the electric wire. Stone unhinged. Knock down all of the stones in three throws. Zar she blows. Blow a ship through a course via straw in ten seconds and We Wild West. They ended up with a total of 57000 but did not complete the big little heist. So they only get 5700 Episode 6, Three Patels. We have Jay, Anip, and Bree Jess, who want to start a Bollywood dance program for youth. Their games are 
teeny sashimi. You have 10 seconds to transfer three pieces of sushi from a conveyor belt to the plates using chopsticks. The second game, Wedding Clashers. Third game, Totally Hammered. The fourth game, A Little Tipsy. And the fifth game, Miniana Jones. Lasso a golden idol, drag it over a pile of burning rock, and then down a ramp into the back of a truck. The three Patels only won $29,000 going into the big little heist, and they could not complete it, so they end up with $2,900. These puns are horrible, I'm sorry. I'm not going to lie to you. And if you would believe it, there are actually two episodes that did not air. You'd have to go to Peacock in order to watch them. I went to Peacock and I didn't find any episodes. They must have taken them all down since... Or maybe it's just not on the free Peacock. Yeah. but there Well, I... Two... Hold on, time out. I have Peacock Premium, so I could check right now. Nope, not on Premium. But there were two episodes that went unaired at least on linear television. And uh, thanks to Bobby McBride on his blog, I have those listings. Episode 7, Girls' Night Out. Jasmine, Makita, and Brittany, who are all recently married, play Statue of Libertini, Pint-Sized, Miniana Jones, Clean up on Cloud Nine, and this was their third game, by the way. Take me out to the small game. Oh, jeez! <laughs> you have to catch a ball in a glove worn on one finger. And this is obviously the game played at Fenway Park. Yeah. Okay, so they won $118,000 going into the big little heist, and they lose. So they end up with uh, $11,800. And the final episode, Whiskey Business, with friends and day drinkers Mike, Justin, and Eddie. Their games are Tiddly Spinks. Using a chip, someone has to flip one of three chips into the Sphinx's arms. Fashion tips. My fair landing. You have to fly a paper plane into the hangar at the end of a runway. Art of the steel. Use a claw to place a statue in a protective case without dropping it or touching any of the lasers. And fork it over. They banked 25000 but they failed the big little heist. So they end up with 2500 So if I'm doing the math here, eight episodes, one big little heist win. Well, you can't say that this show failed because of the budget. No, let's be brutally honest. I saw both the UK version and the NBC version, and they both sucked. They ended up getting a little audience that they did not build on. In fact, I have the numbers here. The first episode was logged in 1.47 million viewers. And the second was 1.35 million. The third was 1.24 the fourth was 1.39. The fifth was 1.46. And the sixth was 1.47. Even as summer programming, that was tiny. And they've been developing and hyping up this show for the better part of two years. But now, I think we have to look at the schedule here. Small Fortune aired at 10 o'clock after American Ninja Warrior. So you would think that they have a built-in audience because American Ninja Warrior is a solid summer show. Here are some of the things that was on opposite 
small fortune on premiere night. The Good Doctor, a CBS News special report, a rerun of NCIS Los Angeles on ION. Oh, this'll do it. The NBA Western Conference first round game four between the Utah Jazz and the Memphis Grizzlies. So it had a chance to get an audience, but for that basketball game on TNT. So maybe we'll have better luck with the next week. It was on against another rerun of The Good Doctor, a rerun of Bowl, and Game 1 of the NBA Western Conference Semifinal between the Denver Nuggets and the Phoenix Suns. Again, 10 o'clock, not much on and not many people watching, but NBA was still doing really good numbers there. The next Monday, it's on against a rerun of Bull and future entry The Celebrity Dating Game with Zoe Deschanel and Michael Bolton. Meanwhile, the NBA Western Conference semifinal game would be game four between the Jazz and the Clippers. They skipped June 21st for some reason. Oh, you know what it was? Ninja Warrior aired an hour later because NBC was airing the U.S. Olympic track and field trials that night. So that's why they skipped that Monday. Well, the Olympic track and field trials are serious business. Just ask Dan O'Brien. Refer back to the Dan and Dave episode. I was waiting for you to reference Carl Lewis, actually. Oh, okay. I'm Carl Lewis. I'm Carl Lewis. I'm Carl Lewis. It's been a long time since we've used that one. So Small Fortune is back in its regular time slot where it was up against Celebrity Dating Game and Bull on broadcast. And meanwhile, on cable, we have, oh my, Stanley Cup Finals between the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Montreal Canadiens. Yeah, because remember, the reason why it's Tampa Bay and Montreal, because, yeah, they're both of the Eastern Conference. This was the first year after COVID where they had like the teams regionalized in regionalized conferences. Yeah. And they just seeded them, I think. So that's why it was two Eastern Conference teams in the finals that year. And the next week, they didn't even bother with the show because the mothership was airing game four of that series which went into overtime. And by July 12th, it was up against Shark Week. It was up against Shark Week. Uh, You're not beating Shark Week. I'm sorry. And the All-Star Celebrity Softball Game on ESPN. Well, that explains it. You're not beating Shark Week, and you're not beating the Taco Bell All-Star Celebrity Softball Game, because that obviously is going to have the biz in it. And so nobody's going to bother with Shark Week or The Miz. And on its last week, it was up against The Usual Suspect, Celebrity Dating Game, and oh, one more thing it was up against. What's the most popular show on television on Monday nights? Well, I'd say Monday Night Football, but Monday Night Football wouldn't be on no, right now. No, no. Uh, uh, something that was on USA. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was going to oh. say, yeah. Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know, know what? Hold, hold on. You know what Small Fortune's ratings had in common with John Cena? Don't say it. Don't you say couldn't it. see them. <laughs> he said it. Predictable, but still funny. Well, very much so. But yeah, the small ratings, small fortune, small budget. And that John Cena joke was timely because the Suicide Squad probably was out at that same time. There you go. Even as a fiscally, economically responsible game show, you could probably get away with another season. Probably. But on January 2nd of 2022, NBC 
handed down their verdict, and canceled the show after one season. I'd say, where did this show go wrong? But Mike pretty much nailed it. It sucked. sucked. It sucked. Hold on. Hey, guy from Pod People, what's your review of this show? It stinks. Wait, hold on. I think we need to hear from Jay Sherman, too. What do you think? It stinks. Hey, Cleveland Cavaliers announcer, what do you think of this show? Get that big stuff out of here. Don't know. Okay, his name is Austin Carr. Thank I didn't you. Know, okay. I okay. Didn't know. Cleveland announcer. His name is Austin Carr. His number seven is retired at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. You put some respect on his name, and he. I says, would if I knew what it was. And he says, "Get that weak stuff out of here." And now Toronto Raptors announcer Jack Armstrong. Get that garbage out of here. Yeah, everybody's all in agreement. It stinks. Charles Barkley, say something about this show. That's terrible. Hold on, I got one more. Hey, Charlie Robinson, how do you feel about this show? That's a penis. <laughs> Whoa, Trey! I want to know about this show. I didn't. We're not talking about Australia's Naughty Home Videos, Charlie. I appreciate the input, though. And we're also not talking about that build that Ted Mosby just made for you. Can I just tell you right now? This show that aired in 2021, I don't think it got any press. I don't think anybody was talking about this. Well, obviously somebody at NBC liked what they saw. They basically ordered the show in 2019, but took their sweet time getting it to series. It was in development for two years. Lil Rel was attached for one of those years. I know game shows to have as quick a turnaround time as a single day. I'm talking about, of course, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, The Million Second Quiz, even so far as The Challengers. You remember The Challengers? That was basically current events as they happened. You needed to stay current. But to sit on a game show for two years? Somebody at NBC liked what they saw, but somebody at NBC also did not have faith in what they saw. So they buried it at 10 o'clock on a summer Monday schedule. If you are serious about getting an audience for your show on NBC during the summer... You don't put it on after Ninja Warrior. You know where you do put it on? After America's Got Talent. But don't cry for Lil Rel Howry. He's doing fine. He's on Eureka. He was in an episode of Poker Face. And of course, later that year in 2021, he would star opposite Ryan Reynolds in the feel-good movie of 2021, Free Guy. So yeah. Lil Rel Howery, his career is doing okay. And his co-star in Free Guy is doing just fine too. Right, Mike? Yeah, to say the least, uh, that guy is having a pretty darn good week. Yeah, and who knows? He might be owning a hockey team in the near future. Who knows? Lord knows he has the money for it now. Yeah, just ask Rob McElwain. I was going to say, this would be a step up from the Wrexham football team. Is it? Yeah. Well, Wrexham oh, is like what? Like third, fourth division? They're fifth division. Fifth division. But there is one plus. They're in FIFA 23. And you know who else is in FIFA 23, Mike? Ted Lasso, isn't he? Yeah, Ted Lasso's team, AFC Richmond, is in FIFA 23. Which, hold on. I'm guessing this is Britain's payback to us after giving them Ted Lasso. I guarantee you this is all Anthony Head's fault. I wouldn't put anything past Anthony Head. He looks like a bastard. Yeah, he engineered probably one of the biggest heel turns in television history. I know Chico hasn't seen the first two seasons of Ted Lasso yet, so don't spoil it for him. 
Yeah, I, 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 I just got Apple TV. I'm just getting caught up on all the stuff I've missed. Don't worry. When we get to the end of season two, and you're going to tell me, I'm going to say something about it. And then we'll have it yes or no about it. But I won't, I won't say any more. So, okay, let's finish this episode. Yeah, let's finish this. Like I said, there's not much to say about Small Fortune except for a brief time during the summer of 2021, it was a very small thing on TV. Well, we have bigger things on TV over at our website. It was a thing on TV.com. We have our previous 360 episodes, all of our mini-sodes, our live watches, all of our specials including our two Hall of Fame episodes, both of which were very good listens. We also were on all social media and It Was a Thing on TV, except we were apparently too big for It Was a Thing on TV on Facebook, so they had to stick us with It Was a Thing on TV podcast. But yeah, Twitter, Instagram, Hive Social. And we get the Mastodon account over at It Was a Thing on TV at tvwatch.porty. And of course, we're also on YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of our future entries, including a live watch we have coming up soon. Yeah, baseball's coming up soon. And Mike brought this up during one of our episodes a couple, months, maybe a month or two ago. Yeah, it was like... Two months ago is since January, I believe. It's been in the 2023 calendar year. So now we're going to watch it. We're going to watch Tim Conway. And what goes well with Tim Conway? Baseball. And then next week, we have a cartoon, a kid's show, and in between, some commercials. But not just any commercials. The best video game commercials to ever come out of the 80s and early 90s. And yes, Paul Rudd is involved. Oh no, hold on. Chico, he didn't cause anything bad, did he? All I've heard was Paul Rudd, a drive-in, and a Super Nintendo. Okay, good. Because I thought he did something about the destruction of the universe. That's good. That's, yeah. <sighs> thank God that didn't happen. Oh, thank God that didn't happen. Thank God that Scott Lang saved us all. Yeah. He totally is not going to save us all going we're forward. We're, we're, do doomed. we're all doomed. We're He's all doomed. doomed us all. You just brought King the Conqueror on to us all. Now, hold on. Spot on up! Spot on up! Spot on up! Yeah, now that's Loki and Mobius' problem. No, you know whose problem that is? Summer versions of us. Oh, that is. Yeah! Because that's right. Loki Season 2 drops this summer. Yeah, the summer variants of us. That's going to be their problem. Oh, yeah. But all of that is coming in the weeks to come right here on It Was a Thing on TV. Oh, and by the way, in a couple of weeks is our Easter show, and you won't believe what we found for our Easter show. What? People being reanimated from the dead. Oh, that's fantastic. It fits in with Easter so nicely, I think. Oh, that's great. Anyway, all of that is coming up in the weeks to come right here on It Was a Thing on TV. Thank you so much for listening. Please be kind to each other, and we will see you for the next one. Wow! Oh, Tiny yeah. Tiny ads to promote the show. Tiny class. I Tiny still say classified ads. You know what? Let's get a clip of Don LaPre to end this episode. Tiny ads. I started out in my one bid room appointment placing tiny classified ads. <laughs> Oh I stored it out. You have, to, you have to say it like you're passing a hemorrhoid. Taking, you have to say it like.